I've been an in-house freelance fashion designer for the last 16 years. And in that time, I've had to correct and clean up a lot of illustrative sketches and boards. So I've become very familiar with what you should do, but even more importantly, what you should not do. So today I'm chatting about my top five things you should stop doing when you're using Illustrator for fashion design. So let's get right into it. Now I will admit the pencil tool has improved significantly. I even talked about how much better it is in this video, but it still does not compare and will never give you the precision of the pen tool. And I know the pen tool is a bit harder to control and learn, but it's a must if you're going to create accurate flat sketches, which is what you should all want to do. So if you're still stumped on how to use the pen tool to flat sketch an illustrator, definitely take one of my classes and there's a link in the bio with a discount code for that. And if you want a preview of how the pen tool works, make sure you check out this video. It's no secret that Illustrator needs closed shapes in order to fill them properly with color. And since most of us will eventually add color to our sketches, you need to make sure you close them as you draw them. And because of the way we draw our flat sketches, normally you need to join the points at center front in order to close the shape. I can't tell you how many times I've encountered sketches that were not closed, and it took up so much more of my time having to go through and do that before I recolored them for CADs or whatever presentation I was working on. It's so much more efficient to just close your shapes as you're drawing. So just take the extra 30 seconds to do it when you first draw your sketch. You'll thank me later. Straight points are annoying AF. And they cause a lot of stress if you're trying to do other things like joining and you don't realize they're there and you keep getting an error message. One of the most common ways I see people creating stray points is not completely deleting a line or using the wrong selection tool to delete an object. And there are other ways to create them, but no matter how you do it, it's a recipe for annoyance. There's actually a really easy way to get rid of them, which I talked about in this video. And in the meantime, start using best practices so you won't create them in the first place. This one is particularly a pain in the butt when you're creating fashion CADs. Many times you have colorways of styles sitting on top of each other, and if you have to move one or delete a colorway, which can happen after a line review or a meeting with the buyer, or you just change your mind, it's a real headache. Early on in my career, I freelanced for Fila, and I had to update some older CADs. Oof, what a nightmare. Nothing was grouped. I remember those few days very vividly, and at one point I slammed my hand on the table and said, everybody needs to take my class. And even if it's not for a CAD, as the designer, you are the initiator of that sketch that's going to be used by many people. I've known designers who saw their sketches on line sheets or in PLM placed there by somebody else and realized that something was missing or the sketch looked weird. Grouping makes it really easy for someone to select your entire sketch and all its details in one clip. And when it's not grouped, the person has to use other methods that could result in them missing a trim or distorting your sketch. So do yourself a favor and group. It'll make everyone's life, including yours, much easier. This is more specific to coloring a sketch, but still important, especially if you're using a freelancer. One of my first freelance jobs was working with a lingerie company and they needed me to recolor some sketches. Some of the instructions were change baby pink to barely pink or change nude to bare skin or change baby blue to blue light. The colors were very close in hue and I had no actual color card to compare them to. But I didn't worry because I figured I could just look in the swatches panel and all the color names would be listed. No problem. Except they weren't. What I saw on the swatches panel was a bunch of processed color chips with no names. Even the designers there forgot which was which. So of course that made it extremely difficult for me to help them. Not only did I have no idea what color was what, but now they forgot which was which. 
easily remedied if they just named the colors. And this was several years ago, but I have a friend who also freelances who was recently complaining about the exact same thing. It's annoying and doesn't help a freelancer help the designer. It just creates more work for both parties. Illustrator can be a wonderful tool to use, or it can make your life really hard if you don't use it properly. And I know that Illustrator isn't really a fashion specific program, but there are so many best practices that can be implemented to make it very effective and a very efficient tool for you as a designer or a freelancer or a brand. Thanks for watching today's video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description to my class or for private tutoring to learn some of those very efficient methods. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you found it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.